Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for July 18th, 2022, recorded on 12 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including severe weather across the Northwest. We're looking at the overall weather patterns and a look at more tropical cyclone activity occurring across the world. So let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that much is quiet across the Atlantic Basin for now. That is certainly some good news. We do actually have a tropical wave here, but no expected development of that. We'll be focusing our attention back towards the northwest United States today, where we do have some risk for severe storms. If you look at the overall risk for severe storms today across portions of the northwestern United States and in the overall patterns here, we can see that we have a slight risk for severe storms today, generally from about Glasgow, Montana, through about Miles City, all the way through Minot, North Dakota, and Devil's Lake. Surrounding that, we have an upgrade to an enhanced risk, level 3 out of 5, uh, for portions of far northeastern Montana all the way in through near Minot, North Dakota, and Devil's Lake. So this is a, a an upgraded enhanced risk for severe storms today across portions of the northwest United States. We look at the overall tornado probabilities. Again, only a 2%, so there's not a super high tornado risk, though there could be some embedded tornadoes. Uh, we talk about these QLCS-type tornadoes, these uh, squall line tornadoes. These, these are certainly a possibility today across portions of the northwest United States. The overall hail probabilities, too, are pretty significant. We have a 30% risk of hail. That means there's a 30% probability of one inch or greater hailstone within 25 miles of a given point from about Glasgow, Montana, all the way through about Minot, North Dakota, with a hatched area from about the Glasgow through uh, Minot area. This includes the potential for uh, hailstones over two inches in diameter. Same thing with the overall wind probabilities, just shifted a little bit further east. Again, we have a risk for uh, the 30% probabilities from about Glasgow through Minot and near Devil's Lake with that uh, hatched area from about the northwestern corner of Montana through about Minot, North Dakota. And that suggests the potential for 75 mile per hour winds or greater. So that is reflected in the overall wind gust potential here. This factors in the potential for thunderstorm wind gusts so again, generally speaking today across portions of about really about Eureka, Kansas through about Beaumont, North Dakota, Miles City, Billings, not really seeing much of a potential for any significant wind gust. Wind gust could be on the order of about 45 to 60 miles per hour, you know, given these convective cells. The biggest risk today will be about from Glasgow through about Minot, North Dakota, where winds could gust as high as about 75 to 80 miles per hour in some of these thunderstorm squall lines. So that is certainly some news that you're going to have to pay attention to and certainly prepare now for that. So if we look at overall the synoptic pattern for what's going on right now, we notice that generally speaking, we have these upper level clouds right now. We can tell that we actually have an upper level uh, low pressure system that is over here across portions of Canada. And this will kind of be moving generally towards the east with time. So all this upper level lift is beginning to occur out in front of it along with a short wave trough. We notice that again, we generally have more moisture. Here's some actually some standing uh, lenticular clouds over the Colorado Rockies right there. But notice that all of these uh, arrows here, these 10 meter wind barbs are pointing from south to north. That means we're getting a large fetch of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico being pulled all the way northward here into North Dakota. And we can actually see that we have these upper level clouds here suggesting that there's already ample moisture in place even well above the surface and combine that with the overall wind flow we're going to expect to see that begin to translate later today there's also a front that is kind of in here you can kind of tell that we've got southerly winds here and they transition on the back side of that so that indicates that there is some type of low pressure system or front that is over in this area so if we look at the overall severe probabilities again today, we notice that the risk for severe storms generally stretches all the way uh, into portions of Wisconsin today. So let's go ahead and jump straight into the models, shall we? So let's go ahead and look at some of these models. This is going to be mainly looking at some of the reflectivity. This is the HRRR forecast, the 13Z HRRR, and we'll kind of just look out here in time. So we notice that again, generally speaking, we have this complex of thunderstorms that begins to develop generally around about 21Z this afternoon. And this really begins to go up across portions of the central and eastern part of Montana. And then this will be moving generally towards the east and northeast with time. So if we actually kind of progress this forward, we notice here by the overnight hours, 
This is about zero Z, so this is about 8 p.m. Eastern time. We have this squall line of shower and thunderstorm complex stretching really uh, from about North Dakota into Montana and even as far south really as the far northwestern part there of South Dakota. So we're definitely kind of getting this overall band. You notice that there's this area of low pressure right here. So kind of this, you know, nice complex of thunderstorms that will be bowing out with time. So the overall greatest severe weather potential is going to be kind of right near this apex of the bow, generally where uh, winds are accelerated. And we notice that complex of thunderstorms moves through. And then we kind of get redevelopment that could occur as we head into the overnight hours. This is about 2 p.m. Eastern or 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern time to a.m. Sorry. And again, we can kind of see that we have these complex of thunderstorms kind of rolling through the area, some potential indicators of some pretty substantial hail in there. So that's going to be certainly something to kind of keep in mind. If you look at these two meter uh, winds here, we notice that again, the wind overall is pretty substantial. We're looking generally for about 25 to 30 knots. And then that of course increases. We can see about 40 knots there. Uh, now these are 10 meter winds and not the wind gusts, but these could be gusting as high as about 75 to 80 miles per hour. So we could be looking at sustained wind that is up there at about 30 to 40 miles per hour increasing as we go through the evening. You can actually see some of these here indicate about 62 knots. Uh, so certainly some potential for severe wind and certainly our uh, significant tornado parameters are certainly there. Our SRH values are over 600. That indicates that we have a plethora of severe weather to deal with. So generally speaking, we'll be seeing the potential for severe weather today across portions of the Northwest United States, including Glasgow, Montana, Minot, North Dakota, all the way through Devil's Lake. So looking forward to time here, what to expect over the next couple of days and a look at the overall tropical weather. Well, this is the GFS forecast, the 150 millibar vorticity. So the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. We notice that generally speaking today, again, we have this ridge of high pressure across portions of the subtropical Atlantic. So that is kind of keeping everything uh, generally at bay for now. We got these pretty strong trades, though they will be weakening with time. Notice what's occurring out here in the deep tropics. We actually have some tropical waves uh, developing over here off of Africa and they're moving uh, westward with time. And so what we actually kind of notice is that we get these strung out tropical waves but this is actually a monsoon trough that is setting up. And what this generally does is it lowers the trade winds across the tropical Atlantic. And overall, that allows for additional strengthening uh, of the westerly winds. So you get generally westerly winds, and then you get basically the tropics to just warm up. And what that allows is for, again, warming in the deep tropics, cooling in the subtropics, and overall a very favorable pattern to return to the tropical Atlantic and that is expected to kind of persist in the model forecast here, really all the way throughout time here. This goes out to about August 3rd, and we notice that we have these tropical waves moving off of Africa, and they're coming off at a bit higher latitudes here. So that indicates that the intertropical convergence zone is beginning that shift northward, as we would expect for August and September and October. We would expect these systems to come off a bit further towards the north and a bit more favorable conditions. With that monsoon trough setting up, that certainly goes to indicate that we could be looking at pretty favorable conditions. If we look at the overall GFS forecast here and we look at the MSLP anomalies, generally speaking, we are anticipating that lower than normal pressures will coincide for the next couple of weeks. Now on the GFS forecast, it does return the pressures to be above average, but if we look at the European ensembles here, and we can kind of just look at what's occurring on the euro. We notice that it's going to be a bit different of a story here. We notice that the overall pressures throughout this time remain lower than average. And the reason for that is the propagation of the Madden Julian oscillation and the differences that coincide on the GFS and the euro. Generally speaking, I'm more inclined to believe the European because it is the most reasonable solution and has handled the propagation uh, dynamics a, a lot better than the GFS has in previous years and certainly is coming to fruition to handle it better this year. So it should be no surprise that an increase in tropical waves will be noted across the deep tropics over the next couple of weeks. And eventually this is going to lead to development. And again, we talked about where these storms could be heading and if the United States is in danger yesterday. So if you want to kind of look at that, I'll leave a link there in the above section. 
Looking at what to expect for the next couple of days in the severe weather realm, we do have a risk for severe storms today, generally across portions, or this is tomorrow, across portions of the northwest United States. Again, a slight risk across portions of the Ohio Valley. And then day four to eight, we do have a risk for severe storms across the north or the northeast United States, including portions of uh, Maine and Connecticut as well. And if we look at the overall tropics here, again, we'll just kind of take a look uh, really at the tropics real quick. We do have Hurricane Estelle, which is uh, really kind of weakening at this point. It is just a very weak hurricane at this point, not really seeing anything going on right now. And that is definitely as a result of some shear in this area. So it is located about 17.8 degrees north here and about 110.5 degrees west and uh, we can see that the official NHC forecast does have this remaining a Category 1 hurricane no longer expected to become a major as it begins to encounter really the cooler sea surface temperatures over here. And just in general, the East Pacific Basin is beginning to shut down and should remain that way as the Atlantic Basin takes over. All right. So that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.